Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Mr. Freeze Build-A-Figure Wave from the, air quotes, iconic, question <laughs> mark, Batman and Robin movie from 1997. It was a big part of my childhood, going back and rewatching it. Eh, not as good as I remember it being. But anyway, I'm stoked that he made these figures. So, let's get into the review. The Dark Knight battles its greatest threats yet. Cold-hearted Mr. Freeze, Venomous Poison Ivy, and the Unstoppable Brute, known only as Bane. Batman finds himself at odds with his crime-fighting comrade Robin, no longer satisfied with his role as a sidekick. As Mr. Freeze threatens to unleash a new Ice Age upon the citizens of Gotham City, the dynamic duo, now joined by their heroic newcomer Batgirl, must learn to work as a team before Gotham City is put on ice. Well, that's what the back of uh, these character cards right here say. Uh, I remember the movie. This is pretty much the same. That's a pretty good summary, honestly. Uh, <laughs> growing up, it was... I was eight years old when it came out, so right there it just too young to know any better and I remember the movie is great honestly loved Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze you gotta think you know us growing up and everything we see him as the Terminator we see him in like Jingle All the Way as the Goofy Dad Kindergarten Cop um, and then you see him in a Batman movie come on it was amazing all the stupid puns and everything <laughs> It was George Clooney as Batman. He wasn't terrible. You got Chris O'Donnell as Robin. You know, not eh. You got uh, Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl. Okay. Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy was actually probably, going back and rewatching the movie as an adult, it's probably the highlight of it all. But yeah, when McFarlane announced these figures, I was really excited getting Mr. Freeze. Uh, my only biggest complaint is we didn't get a Bane, so that would have been really cool. Hopefully, maybe he's coming as a deluxe later. I'd be really excited to see that. Uh, just getting these figures out of box in hand, they do look really nice. Um, I'm not a huge McFarlane collector, but I will get the ones I like. And this going back and watching this movie as an adult, I recently went back and watched it with my three-year-old son and oh my gosh it was hard to get through um but having the nostalgia for it really helped <laughs> but not as good as i remember i uh, still love the characters these figures are great so without further ado let's get them off the rotating base and take a look at them you know one by one a little closer Quick disclaimer before we really get into the video, I will be withholding all ice puns, so don't worry for everyone's sanity, I will be withholding all the ice puns. However, my poor wife has not been so lucky since I got this guy in. It's been Arnold Schwarzenegger from Batman and Robin quotes all day, just all the corny ice quotes. So yeah, let's get back into the video. So let's start with none other than the George Clooney Batman. Uh, so he came with these little ice effects that you can put on his hands. You can put these on Robin's hands or Batgirl's hands as well. Pretty nice. And a little character card. Read up on the back about the movie. And he did come with one of the typical McFarlane little peg hole disc stands. And taking a closer look at him, I think they did pretty good on the lightness. Old Toddy Mac did a pretty good job. I can see George, young George, younger George Clooney there. Yeah. Uh, I don't like how the ears keep bending. I have heated them up, and they just keep kind of bending to the inside. I don't remember it being that way. I don't think it's supposed to be that way. But, eh. They just keep going in. But yeah, the suit looks good. Um, good detail. It's honestly a simple design. It's solid black. So you don't have any like extra paint or anything. It's got a black bat signal. The biggest thing I think with this suit is getting the textures right. 
And, you know, of course, you're going to have the infamous bat nipples right there. And it was a skin tight suit. So you got all the, you know, the muscle definition and everything built into the suit. Of course, that's not going to show through that thick leather. But yeah, looks pretty good. He's going to have your typical McFarlane articulation with the butterfly joints. I'm not going to go over articulation on all of them. He's got the double jointed elbows with, eh, that's a big gap on that elbow. The cape is plastic, but it's a thin plastic. Again, you know, we all want cloth goods, capes with a wire in them, so you can pose it up a little better. But at least it's not a super heavy cape. All right, next let's take a look at the Chris O'Donnell Robin. So, of course, you get his card as well. It's the exact same readout on the back. He comes with some different freeze effects. We'll pop them on him. Let's see how they look on him. They fit more. Uh, like this goes on his head and his shoulder. And this goes on his whole other arm. So he looks super frozen. And let's take a closer look at him. Of course, he also comes with the typical McFarlane stand. Help him stand up. And go look at that face sculpt that does look good he really nailed these likenesses we got the red paint I'm surprised uh, old Toddy Mac didn't do <clears throat> chase versions of these figures with the silver that they had on them the silver suits at the end of the movie I'm surprised those never popped up Robin does have a shorter cape it's that same thin plastic See the red goes down there. We got the, the right shade of red. His suit's got the the built-in muscles and everything. You know, the infamous nipples from the beginning of the movie. It's got the Robin symbol on his boots. Nice looking figure. It's really spot on. Happy with that one. And real quick, just wanted to show you guys what it looked like with the frozen effects on there this will not fit on batman because his ears but you can get that one on him if you want but yeah you could probably use these for other figures in your display anything just cool effects nice nice throw-ins would have preferred some maybe extra hands but let's be honest i think all you really need are fists i think the only accessory that these came with that i would have wanted would be batman should have came with the back credit card all right next let's take a look at the alicia silverstone batgirl of course she also comes with her character card and the little disc stand but no other accessories she didn't come with any ice effects or any extra hands or anything like that so a little more lackluster with accessories um with no uh, ice effects like what came on, what came with Batman and Robin here. But let's look at that Alicia Silverstone likeness. That looks good. With the mask covering up the face, um, I feel like this one isn't as good, but it still looks decent. The, ha the hair sculpt's really good. That will hinder a lot of articulation at the head. A suit, the Batgirl symbol, good sculpting on the suit. Uh, that different color on the what everyone's deemed the McFarlane diaper does bother me on this figure, especially. The thing McFarlane does do well is the double jointed elbows on their female figures. That one looks pretty good, honestly. It's got thinner. Little spikes, or gauntlets. Her cape's a little thicker. It's a lot more stiff. It's a lot thicker. It's a longer cape than Robin. Nice sculpting on it. No, not a lot going on the back of the suit. And sculpting the boots, those thigh-high boots. 
and she does have those dreaded high heels. All right, next we're going to take a look at the Uma Thurman Poison Ivy. Of course, she also comes with her little card, like all the other ones. Same read up on the back, got her real name, Poison Ivy up there. So, yeah. Also, McFarland stand, and that's it as far as accessories. I'm really disappointed that she didn't come with any vines, anything extra. For kind of like, um, when I think of something she could have came with, think of like some of the Power Rangers lightning collection effects. You can make some vines like that. Ooh, I actually just realized I could probably use maybe something from my pumpkin wrapper figure. I wonder how good that would look. I might try that. But, uh, yeah, this figure looks amazing. It's got the double jointed elbows, just like Batgirl. That look better than the male double jointed elbows, honestly. I will say she should have came with some extra hands, too. It's got some good gesturing hands. I like this one a lot. Because, you know. Yeah. And that lightness is really good. That face sculpt is really good. And the sculpting on this figure. All the leaves, all of that is sculpted on. That looks so good. The hair is a really good color red. That will hinder a lot of the head movement. I mean, it's flexible. You can get it over to turn. So it's not too bad. And it's got the butterfly joint there. A lot of, well, more back motion in front on the torso. She has a cut up here. And then waist, another cut down there. And I really like that this and this match really well color-wise because that's a rubber piece right there to cover the leg articulation right there got some sculpted vines on the leg the double jointed knees the sculpting continues onto the lower leg and the boot let's have a ankle swivel right there again that dreaded high heels of course typical McFarlane toe articulation, the leaf sculpted in the hand with the green rings. My camera will focus. There we go. Just really good looking figure. Even the the earrings on the ears. But yeah, Uma Thurman Poison Ivy looks and good. Now on to the main reason I wanted this entire wave. You have the Mister Freeze build a figure my only gripe with this guy because yeah the articulation isn't the best but honestly it's a bigger figure it's McFarlane you know you're kind of expecting that you know with the double jointed or the double jointed elbows it's fine I can get over that I really wish it wasn't this flat plain plastic sil silver or gray I wish it was like a painted silver because the blue looks good. The blue looks really good. But I really wish this was silver and not this just plain plastic gray. The little uh, pauldrons, I guess they're called, up here do move. You have to put those on. You can lower them. You can raise them, however you want it to look. This head sculpt is... Definitely Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then his only accessories, he does come with his little freeze gun and this little freeze effect that looks nice. It's got the translucent blue here and it goes into like a darker blue at the end. Uh, he can't, I mean, he can hold it in both hands, but it's going to be kind of, I mean, you can make it work. The single jointed elbows make it a little tough. I just kind of like having him posed, holding it down like that on the shelf. 
gives a little more space. His articulation, see as a build a figure, he's a bigger bigger figure. He's not you're not gonna get much movement out of the torso, you get more back into the front. He does have butterfly joints in there, but the sculpting here on the chest piece uh, really limits it coming forward. So you're gonna get a lot more back than forward. Like I said, single jointed elbows. It's got the Farland wrist pegs. I do like that these are more, because of the gauntlet here, they're more inset. So you don't see that joint, but it does really, you're not getting movement. Like, I don't know if mine's frozen or I think it's just the gauntlet limiting it from really moving. And I mean, you get a lot of twist and tilt and then twist down lower at the waist. He's not going to kick out too far. Well, oh, he does kick out far, but he is a builder figure. So these legs do pop off pretty easy. Let me pop that back on. So they pop off easy, but they pop back, back on easy. So yeah, see, it's going to keep popping off there. But, okay. And it's single jointed knees. You're only going to get that much movement. He is a big guy. He's got these big feet. That leg keeps popping off. Toe articulation that you're probably never going to use. And an ankle rocker. And not much movement there because that hinders the down. You do get a little bit of up. You hear that ratchet in there. But yeah, looks great. I'm happy with the wave just based off this guy, but I do like all the figures, honestly. And almost forgot, Mr. Freeze does have a boot cut, so that helps a little bit. And I really like how this piece covers that peg. That's really smart. See? Aha! Now, if only this was a little wider to cover that peg, but it's fine. And of course, we have to do a quick size comparison. And let's get the handy dandy ruler out here. I do have all the figures that came with their McFarlane stands under there. So I'll be putting the ruler on top. Uh, because these guys do not like to stand up, especially Robin here. So Batgirl, right at seven inches. Robin, a hair over seven. Batman is seven and a half to the top of the ears. We got Mr. Freeze here. Honestly, yeah, seven and a half, a little over, about seven and three quarters. And Poison Ivy, a hair over seven because uh, her hair sculpt is a little higher. So, yeah, um, let's do some size comparisons with the male figures first. So, we'll pull the females out, and then we'll do some size comparisons with the female figures because I'm not going to be able to get everything in this shot. All right, so for some quick size comparisons, we have a little Arnie comparison over here with the Mafex T800 next to Mr. Freeze. Of course, Mr. Freeze is a lot bigger, being that McFarlane 7-inch scale. And then we have the NECA Robocop right there. That scale's good. Of course, NECA's that 7, 7.5-inch scale as well. Next... We have the DC Multiverse Captain Carrot and the Mezco Green Ranger. Then for some Marvel Legends, we have MCU Endgame Iron Man and the animated series VHS Cyclops. Of course, these guys are going to be smaller. And if you want to go even smaller, the Jada Toys Chester Cheetah. His ankles turned. He doesn't want to stand up. There we go. And the SH Figure Arts, Andrew Garfield, Amazing Spider-Man. Doesn't want to stand up either. There we go. Of course, these guys are tiny in comparison. And lastly, for the male figures, I wanted to do a quick Batman size comparison. So here's the George Clooney Batman next to the... McFarlane 
uh, re-release of the DC Direct animated series Batman. There's the Christian Bale Batman from the Dark Knight trilogy from SH Figure Arts. The Nightfall Batman from McFarlane. And the Robert Pattinson The Batman from Mafex. So you can see all the different uh, sizes of the Batman and Robin George Clooney Batman is definitely the bigger figure. Uh, it's even bigger than the other McFarlane figure up there, the Nightfall Batman. And of course, the SH Figure Arts is going to scale really small, kind of more in scale with the animated series line Batman. And Mafex is kind of more of your true 6 inch scale over there. And next for size comparison, we have the female figures next to a SH Figure Arts Wonder Woman from the Justice League movie and a Spider Gwen from Marvel Legends uh, Across the Spider Verse Wave. Um, and you can definitely tell these fem female figures are a lot bigger. No SH Figure Arts uh, does scale small, especially with the females. And the Spider Gwen is more of like a teenager, so she's a lot supposed to be a lot shorter. But that is definitely a huge size difference, so these will not work together. And next, just for some more size comparisons real quick, we can put the ladies next to the Mezco Green Ranger. And there's the McFarlane Captain Carrot. And real quick... How about NECA Robocop again and MCU Iron Man from Endgame from Mar Marvel Legends. You can tell, yeah, these girls, especially Poison Ivy, really tall. I know I did have to keep them on their stands because with those feet, they will absolutely not stand up. It is infuriating trying to get them to stand up without those stands. So, my final thoughts on the Batman and Robin wave from McFarlane. The Arnold Schwarzenegger Mr. Freeze is definitely the highlight for me. It's the whole reason I really wanted the wave. The Arnie likeness is great. The blue colors are great. Just really wish that gray was more silver. Uh, a little more articulation wouldn't hurt. Poison Ivy's my next favorite. All that sculpting with the leaves on uh, her torso and everything are great. The lightness is good. The lightness is good on all of them, really. Uh, the color of her hair really pops. Batgirl and Batman, you really, they're hard to mess up because they're just that plain black, so they look good. And the red on my Robin, uh, he honestly would have been the easiest to mess up out of those three, but I had no QC issues with mine. So of course, McFarlane's scale is always a little wonky with the female figures and everything, but overall, I really like the wave. I'm happy with it. I have nostalgia towards the movie. And if you have nostalgia towards the movie, you'll probably like it too. Um, if you don't like McFarlane at all, it's not for you. The ice effects are cool. Just overall, it's a pretty good wave. Uh, like I said, if you like the movie, you'll like the figures. That's it, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more content. I've got a lot more things coming up. I'm just knocking out some reviews right now, but I've got some different content planned for the channel. So stay tuned. See you all next time.